Welcome back to vSphere Upgrade, the inside track. In this episode, we're going to be discussing upgrading and migrating vCenter Server. I'm Kev Johnson. And I'm David Stamen. So just to give you an overview of things that we're going to be looking at in this episode, uh, we're just going to cover you know, what's, what's supported for, uh, for upgrades and migration. So we can go from 6.0 to, to 6.5 or 6.7. Uh, something to bear in mind we did discuss in the previous mm -hmm. episode is that the fact that the, uh, the host name is going to be retained, so the primary network identifier is going to be transferred across. Uh, we support migration of both embedded and external topologies, uh, all of the same databases that you've got in you know, your, your existing environment. Mm -hmm. um, by default, we're only going to take across your inventory and your configuration data. Yeah. But that's good, right? So that's going to make sure that the time is less. It's going to take me maybe like, what, 30 minutes Abs or so? Absolutely, absolutely. There, there is the option there uh, to, to take across that, that, all that legacy data, but generally we'd recommend that you only take across what you need. Yeah. So task and events might be in your syslog server, you have your historical data, it might be like in vRealize operations or another performance. So really, as I like yeah. to say, is leave all that stuff behind and yeah. just start over from afresh. It's a perfect opportunity to clean up. Yeah. Um, something else to bear in mind is whether, you're, whether or not you're using Update Manager right now, as soon as you get to the appliance, you're going to have an update manager. So you know it's it's all there. It's built into the appliance. Um, we've got a migration assistant. It's going to run some pre-checks. It's going to make sure everything's good. And we've got a super easy rollback as well. We do yeah. have a very easy rollback, right? Cool. If you have any issues, you just shut down the brand new appliance, power back on the original one, rejoin it to the domain, and you're ready to go. And, Absolutely. And that's like the best part of the new migration, right? And when we think about this, is not only with like migration upgrades. There's no such thing as a horizontal migration. Okay. Because a migration is both an upgrade and a migration together. So if we are on 6.7 Windows today, sure. there is no way to get to the 6.7 appliance. You might have to use those tools we previously talked about. So you're, 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 you're waiting for the, for the next major version. You are then. making for the next major release. So okay. it's very cool. important to understand that. But when we do think about migrations, we actually have this migration assistant. It mm -hmm. exists on the vCenter server appliance ISO, mm -hmm. and you need to copy over this folder or run it from your Windows-based vCenter, okay. or even your platform services controller. So, or so you, just, you just run it, it does some things, and then you just close that window, yeah? No, don't close it. It needs oh. to stay running the entire time. And oh. so it's going to do some pre-checks. It's going to check for now. things such as DNS and NTP, what's installed, right? Maybe you forgot the Composer service that's installed there. We're going to highlight some of those things. Okay. Make sure things are compatible. Um, and it's going to give you details of like what to do next, right? Do I need to run this on my VUM server? Do I need to run it on my vCenter? Like, I need to run it on every single one. So it kind of walks you through that. And by default, it does run on port 9123. Okay. So if we look at that ports.vmware.com, we're going to say, hey, this is there. But there are ways to change it if you do have a lockdown environment and you can't use that port in your environment. Okay, cool. And the reason you need to leave it open, right, is because mm -hmm. it establishes that that connectivity to the new new appliance. Yeah, so it actually that's, is, that's why your data transfers through. Yeah, it actually is. That's what is moved from the Windows-based vCenter to the appliance. If you're doing an upgrade, you don't have to worry about manually running it. Okay. We have the ability to automatically run that when you do an upgrade in the background, so it's not really needed. Okay, cool. So um, the, the the actual upgrade process. What we're going to do is we we mount our VCSA ISO file, mm -hmm. and um, we we get these options. We we can either install, upgrade, migrate, or we can even do. A a restore from a yes. file-based backup. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to either say we're going to upgrade or we're going to do a migration. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to deploy a brand new vCenter server appliance from an OVA file that is, that is located on that ISO file. Uh, it's going to deploy, it's going to require a temporary IP address, and that temporary IP address must have connectivity back to your source vCenter server. What happens if I have like four vCenters? Do I need four temporary IPs? Well, it depends on you know, how you, uh, you what, what, what are you doing? You're doing one, one migration at a time? No. We can, we, can, we can talk about um, you know, the CLI capabilities and things mm -hmm. like that, so we can do batch migrations and things okay. a little later. Um, but yeah, so we're going to deploy an, an appliance, um, and if, if we need to join it to Active Directory, we're going to need an account to do okay. that with, with privileges there. And you know, we, we, we've got this capability now to say, you know, we think it's going to take roughly this amount of time mm -hmm. based on the, the amount of data that we're transferring. So that's, that's kind of helpful. If, you're, if you just want to do your planning, so you mm -hmm. need to submit change requests, that can be helpful. That is very useful. And really, is we do have the UI method, which a lot of customers are aware about. But mm -hmm. a little known thing that not many people know about is the CLI installer. Sure. This was first introduced in 6.5, and we even enhanced it more in 6.7. But it exists on the appliance ISO. There's a folder right next to the UI installer called CLI installer. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a folder for the templates because we have these JSON-based templates that we need to fill out with the information for the appliances we're doing. And it's beneficial to know that not only can I do these for upgrades and migrations, mm -hmm. but also installations. And one of 
my favorite features about this is we may not have test environments, right? Is people we all say have test environments. It's called production. Some of us have separate <laughs> production environments, yeah. yeah. And so what this allows us to actually do is run a pre-check against the environment, which will do a complete dry run of the upgrade without mm -hmm. actually impacting production. So that's really good to know is that I size it right, that I put the right usernames, the right passwords, is, is it going to actually deploy successfully without having to worry about rolling back? So I really like this tool. And one enhancement in 6.7 is what we call batch mode. Instead of actually only doing one appliance at a time, we can actually build multiple JSON files together, no way. put them in a folder, and we can set it and forget oh, it. Oh, man, that sounds it. awesome. So, so you're deploying really a cool. lab, and you need to deploy 10 vCenter servers. You can do that, that sounds, automatically. That sounds super cool. Yeah, we have a lot of resources on um, vcentral.vmware.com where we have those guided walkthroughs um, sure. where we can go through. Cool. And one of the other things I like about that is, you know, you, you can you can store those inversion controls. So you're making yeah. changes. You can prove all the things that you've made, all the changes you've made. Yeah. And I think that about wraps us up with vCenter yeah. Server. So that was super simple. Yeah. Um, so thanks very much for joining us. Uh, please join us next time where we'll be talking about upgrading ESXi hosts, VMware tools, and VM compatibility. As always, for more information, please visit vSphereCentral.vmware.com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.